What do we have today? Today we look at some kick-ass entry-level cameras. Let's focus on that. All right, it's enough random bickering. Back to also random bickering. <laughs> Everybody, welcome back to Aperture Chat. I am Tom. I'm Ryan. I'll let him introduce himself for a change. Uh, this week, for our Tuesday review session, we're going to look at a couple of entry-level DSLRs. Mostly this came about because I was talking to The Hobbit today when I picked up my breakfast sandwich, which I guess was really a lunch sandwich by that point. Kind of slept in a little late. And he was asking me about, you know, what should he get? And I gave him a specific recommendation. Which, but we're going to look at the Canon T3i and the Nikon D3300 because they're about the same price point. Put them up on the big board because they do deserve a home up there. Entry-level DSLR is just as important as anything else. And we're also going to follow that up with the Sigma 2470 uh, Pro-level lens. Well, well let's, we should probably talk about it before we figure out how frivolous we, of a we thing We should talk about this. Is. The Canon T3i is not the brandy newest camera from Canon. It has been surpassed by the 4i and the 5i, but they're at a higher price point. And we wanted to get two cameras that were close to the same price point. With the 3i, which is a good entry-level camera, it's a, a 18 megapixel crop sensor, it has an articulated screen on the back, so you can actually flip it all the way around. It does do video, uh, 1080p, 30 frames a second. Um, mm -hmm. All around, good entry-level camera that can do video. Yeah, I've, I've not spent a lot of time with the T3i. I have played with your T2i quite a bit. Honestly, the only difference between the 2i and the 3i is the articulated screen. Which is scary. I mean, the UI must be better, right? Or is it The UI is a little better. I, it has to be, because that thing is a friggin' Chinese puzzle trap to try and actually turn on. A lot of features. This is true. The UI is a little better. It's a little cleaner. Uh, but the biggest, but as far as specs go, it's got the same processor, the same sensor. Uh, so it's, as hardware-wise, it's the articulated screen. Software-wise, it has a little bit nicer interface. The price right now, if you were to walk into Hunts and buy it, would be 549, and that includes the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. And we are reviewing these with their kit lenses. Mm -hmm. Like you should, so, because that's like what they should, because be. the idea is you can walk in, you can buy this, and you can walk out and go take pictures. Mm -hmm. Well, charge the battery, then go take pictures. So this is the frivolous scale. Yep. Are, of are you... how frivolous it is. So not necessarily how accurate or how well it'll perform, but how how well used it is for the money. So, for people who like to take selfies, all of it it gets a one. No, it's probably about a five. About a five? Okay. Because it's, it's about as frivolous, less... Short of using your iPhone. Frivolous, non-frivolous as you can get with an SLR. Yeah. I, I, I can see that working for that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give it an, a whopping eight. I still think you should use your iPhone for taking selfies. For the photo enthusiast, and this is where Matt is, this is where the Hobbit is, so this is really kind of the, the scale that I'm most concerned with with this one. So this... You're putting your money into an SLR versus putting your money into a mirrorless low-end system or a good point-and-shoot. Yes. The big reason Matt asked me is because he has a point-and-shoot, and he was looking for something specifically he'll be able to change lenses on. I'm going to stay at five. All right. It's, it's a good use of money for somebody looking to spend photos. You could buy a, a really good semi... Semi-interchangeable point and shoot, but All right. that's a good place for it. Uh, I actually, this might be the only time I ever give something this. That's not true. Um, but for someone who's looking to get a DSLR specifically for DSLR features, I think this is a great camera to grab. I'm going to give them a one. That is probably the best place you could put your money. So now we're looking at the Semi Pro. It's pretty frivolous. Even as a backup body, that thing is pretty terrible. So it's not really a good use of money, therefore sort of an extra add-on. i got to add a lot to that. Yeah. I don't know. 25. 25? That's, That's still generous because it is still an SLR backup, but see, it's pretty bad. I use my 2i as my backup, and so, and, and as a backup, it's okay. I'd probably rent something before I'd go purchase it. I think 25 is about right. I mean, it's not 
if I was going to purchase it as a backup, it wouldn't be the worst use of my money. All right, for a wedding photographer. It's going to go up a little bit. It's it, such a very bad thing to have to use for a wedding, and it seems like it's to try and use that is not very good. No, it's not. Uh, no. 40. 40. I'm actually, I've, I've tried to shoot it at a wedding. Well, I've shot my two eye. And like I said, my, internally, they're pretty much the same thing. And I don't think you used a single picture that I gave you from that wedding. Oh, I used a couple. It must have been outside. Uh, so I will give it a 45. Because it has crap for low light performance. Yeah, it's, it's a tough little camera to use sometimes. Yep. Uh, event photographers. I'm going to go to 50, but that's probably about as high as I'm going to go with an SLR like that. It's not a very valuable use, but it's still an SLR, so it's yep. that's probably about as high as I'd go. All right, 50 works because it's just it just doesn't do well in low light. I mean, it'd probably be fine no. if you're close enough where you could almost use it like that um, the spotlight metering that's now in the... You know, if you totally blew away and ignored your meter and just shot it like you were just exposing for whoever's on stage, it'd be okay because there'd just be a ton of black. It's a little bit weird. Yep. And then for our sports photographers or our photojournalists. I'll go back to 45. It's small it's not... and you can you can beat the hell out of it and you can use it a lot. I It's not as crazy. Yeah. I mean, if you're outdoors, the low light doesn't make a difference. It does. It does, though. Well... I've never seen a football. I mean, a football game in the middle of the day are not most of the football games that I would be shooting. Yeah, which is strange, but yeah, I know what you mean. I'll, I'll bounce it back to a forty just because most sports are outside, unless you're shooting hockey, in which case I would say hockey is terrible. Yeah, basketball is the worst though. Basketball is awful. Really? Yes, basketball. I've never tried to shoot a basketball. Oh, game. it's terrible. My D ninety could not do it. My D ninety with some decent glass would not. You still terrible. wouldn't do it. All right. So tallied up the score. Uh, Ryan gives the Canon T3i with the kit lens a 28.3, and I was remarkably close giving it a 28.1, which gives it a composite score of 28.2. Math. Yeah, it's a decent score for something that's the lowest SLR you can buy. It's much less useful for somebody trying to make money with it, but it's still not totally useless or frivolous for anybody. Ryan, tell us a little bit about the uh, D3300. The D3300 is the lowest Crop sensor, camera from Nikon. Uh, it's the third edition of the 3000 series, which was 3000, 3100, 3200. Now it's 3300, the third revision. It is innovative in its use of graphical UI to guide you through taking the picture you want to take as opposed to the picture the camera thinks you want to take. So if you put the camera in auto, full auto, and just let it take pictures, it'll do very well. It meters well, it does all that sort of stuff. The tracking is very good. If you use its guide features or its, its scene features, it explains the basic principle of the photography that you're trying to do. If you want out-of-focus backgrounds, it'll explain and put you in aperture mode, and it'll tell you that a lower aperture gives you a better out-of-focus background, and all this sort of, sort of information is built into the graphical software of the camera. It has the flip screen the same way, I think. It has, it's very small, it's light, it, the, the Nikon, Kit lenses have been getting very good, actually. Yep. Um, you can upgrade your, your lenses very easily. So 3300 is a very solid entry-level camera for a lot of people. Plus, you can get the uh, 3300 in red or black. You can get it in red. Didn't they make a gunmetal, too? Or was that the 3200? That was the 3200 you could get in gunmetal or black. The like 33 you can get. really in... cool. It was. It reminded me of my old XTI, my first digital body, because that came in silver or black. Starting at the bottom, people who take selfies. If I give the T3i a 5, I will give the 3300 a... They're about the same price point, right? The, yeah, the 3300 uh, is $20 more. I'll stick with a 5. All right. For that extra 20 bucks, it'll bump up to a 9. Okay. All right. For our photo enthusiast friends out there, and I'm really thinking of Hobbit when I do this This will go down to a one. Yep. They use the ecosystem and the just, yeah. Yeah. Now, you, you this seriously, I'm a Canon fanboy, <laughs> and I will tell you this is the best camera for your money 
if you're just starting out. So mm -hmm. brand loyalty, be damned. Yeah. Good yeah. The best camera is the best camera. For the money, especially. For the money. All right. For the semi-pro. I'm going to go back to a three. Three. Yeah, because this has better low-light capability, better resolution it, than the other That one. it does. It definitely does. And I've seen people shoot... Fro, especially. Watching Fro stick that thing on good glass, it's it's a backup camera I would have. Yeah, I mean, I can't give it worse than a 10 for a wedding photographer. Weddings are tough for a 3300. Yep. Uh, makes it a little bit weird. I'm going to go 20. All right. Um, I am not going to argue with you there. Because it does have a little bit better low light than the Canon. You could shoot it. The only thing I'd be worried about is if you own the red one, that people might not take you quite as seriously. Yeah, the red but, one's a bad choice. But people love it. Like it, it outsells the black one two I to don't one. Care. I mean, I know. For that level, yeah, you shouldn't be buying the red one. Okay. Just like the silly white lenses. You don't need white lenses. You always need white lenses. Uh, for an event photographer. So this is an event as opposed to sports. I as think opposed sports to sports. Is Remember we, we judged event to be concerts, things like that. Yeah. Um, what was the last up to 20 for the last 20, one? You, get, you gave it I'll 20. 20 for the I'll go to 25. 25. I'm actually going to leave it at 20 because I know two people who shoot 3300s at concerts and they get good pictures out of them. They're, they're good pictures. I... Yeah, that's that's fine. So and then for no argument. a sports photographer, I'll go back to a twenty. Go back to a twenty because it's still kind of weird to have a, a such a low crop sensor around, but it's such a good entry level now. I could see having it around. I'm going to give it a twenty-five. Just to try and keep it from being the top of the leaderboard. No, not really. Uh, across the scale, it's it's pretty good. Yeah. So tabulations are in on the D. 3,300. Ryan rated it. No, no, I'm going to do my rating first. I rated it a 14.2. Holy shit. And then Ryan gave it a 12.3, which gives this a composite of 13.3. It's, it's a solid use of money for oh. almost everybody. It is a very solid use of money. They've, they've come very far with that D3000 series. You really have. This is quite quite the... Thank you, Fro, for letting us know how much you like your D3000. <laughs> I would not shoot it at ISO 6400 ever. But sure, it's yeah. a very good camera. And we got one last thing to look at today. It is the Sigma 2470 f2.8 EX DG HSM lens. I had to get it all out there. Yep, this is, uh, this is a hell of a thing. This is. This is one hell of a lens. It focuses faster on yours, I'm sure. Probably. Because your body's a little better focusing. Yep. Um, so, a little bit of background on the DGEX HSM Sigma 24-70 um, <laughs> Sigma has had a 24-70 for two or three models before that. They were all that, crap. Not really. They're all actually pretty decent. They have a 28 to 70 that's also, it's pretty decent. I work with it often enough. It's a very decent lens. Um, it doesn't com quite compare to the sharpness you get out of the 24 to 70 high end DGEX HSM. I say high end, the lens costs at, at best half what the main third party, main non third party lenses cost. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was more like a third. I spent $600 on a used 24-70 to Sigma. I which, spent about 800 on a brand new yeah, one. something like that for Canon, which for makes my it Canon more expensive one. because it's oh, a Canon Sigma one. doesn't do the price difference. A second, third-party market. Second-hand it is. Second-hand second used hand lenses. Might be. Used lenses don't lose any value for you. Congratulations. <laughs> um, they do lose value for Nikon at the moment. Uh, but yeah. It's it's a great lens. It's very sharp. There's very little chromatic aberration for a third party lens. Um, it focuses quick. It's massive. It's, it's, it's a, a grapefruit. Grapefruit. It's, it's it was the first one to adopt the 82 millimeter front glass that Sigma likes to use a lot right now, and Tamron soon I think. Yeah, although Tamron's still sticking with the 77. 
Yeah, like, Tamron like, is very Nikon 77 all the way through kind of thing. But Yep. So this is one of the few things that Ryan and I can both rate evenly because we both own a copy of it for our respective cameras. Mm -hmm. And even brand new at an $800 price point, you are getting, well, what's the math on this? Like 90% of the first party lens. Easily. Easily, maybe 95. Eh, at 50 to 60% of the cost. Yeah. So your cost to quality ratio is skewed much higher and if you really, really need the, the, the Nikkor high-end or the Canon L glass, then you're gonna get it, and you're not gonna care about the cost. But if you don't need it, third parties have made a huge amount of, a huge stride huge, in this. Huge. The places where it, it doesn't quite live up to the other ones is focusing in extreme low light, and I mean extreme low light. Yep. And uh, sharpness wide open at 2.8. Uh, yep. The sharpness wide open at 2.8 you do lose a little bit, you do with everything, but you lose a little bit more than you would with a Nikon or a Canon. Other than that, it performs very well at weddings for me. I shoot every, <laughs> almost every Saturday with it. Uh, it performs very well. It's probably very unfrivolous it, for almost anybody to own. Pretty much. Uh, I can't say that. Selfies is still kind of high, so selfies. Yep. So we'll start with selfies. 14. 14? All right. I'm going to give it a 25. I think it I'm is a little more frivolous. Because it's a wide angle lens. <laughs> okay. Let you take your selfie group. You can actually take a selfie with it. If you couldn't actually take a selfie with it, it would be much, much higher. All right. If it was like the Tamron 70 to 200 or something, it's much different. Yeah, well, you, you couldn't, not just because of how, how it's not a wide lens, it's but the hyperfocal. Yeah, it, it can't it. focus less than four feet, and I don't have a four-foot arm. No one does. You. All right, for a photo enthusiast, would you tell Hobbit to go buy this if he was going to buy much, one lens? Yes. Uh, five. Five. I can agree with you there. I wouldn't say, you know, break the bank to buy it, but make sure it's the first piece of glass you buy after the, to replace there, yeah. the kit lens. It depends what you do, really. And someone you call a photo enthusiast is probably going to be doing a lot of things that require a wide-angle lens. Yeah. All right. For the semi-pro. Five. Four. Four. Four? four. I don't, it's, I, it lives in the semi-pro. Yeah, it does live in the semi-pro world. I'm going to give it a one. No, I'm going to give it a four. I like your four. Yeah. All right. For a wedding photographer. The frivolous nature in the wedding bracket of the Sigma lens. For weddings. That's going to be a one. Yeah, I can't see how someone who's yeah. making their primary living shooting weddings, unless they're shooting like $8,000 a day Newport weddings. You don't have to be, but is buying anything other than this lens for their wide angle. I see it a lot too, and I, that makes it makes it very good. It's seeing it out in the out in the market a lot is very good. So yeah, that's I think okay. that lives there. For event photographers, really? so the other option, so like to judge the frivolous nature of it, there aren't really other good options for a high quality third party twenty four to seventy two point eight. Right. The Tamron is not good. The sick the Tokina's kind of crappy. I think a lot of Tokina stuff really doesn't do very well. Um, so yeah, it's it's down single digits because events you generally need a fast wide angle lens. The yep. zoom is nice to have. It's not frivolous to have a zoom lens anymore. It used to be kind of weird to have a zoom lens because it was you lose quality. But yep. they've, they've overcome that pretty well. Yeah. Oh, I'll go back to four. Back to a four. Uh, I use this to shoot events. So do I. I, I use this to shoot concerts. This is by my first lens I'll grab unless I'm shooting from way back and I grab the 7200. Yep. Uh, I, I will give it a three. And for a sports photographer. This is a little bit up there because 24 to 70 is a weird focal distance for a sports. So, well, the problem is we're at sports slash photojournalist yes. or whatever. Yes. This is that high-end, super professional level. Photojournalist is not really high-end, super professional level, but 
Sports is a little weird, but photojournalist especially is not very weird at all. It's one of the main lenses you'd use as a photojournalist. I'll, I'm going to stay with the five, five, honestly. It's a little bit... The quality, you lose a little bit of things that you need as a photojournalist, but I think it's still very usable in almost any situation. All right, yeah, it is very usable across the board. And I mean, assuming you're not getting shot at at night in the middle of the desert and you needed to focus on something, but I think almost anywhere I've seen myself needing glass for journalism, it's it performs. I'm gonna yeah, so much for baseball. I'm gonna give it a six. All said and done, Ryan gives it a seven, flat out seven. And I'm not far off with a seven point three. As we've pointed out, I don't like significant digits, and I round improperly, which means we gave it a 7.2. Granted, this is something we both use every day. Like, yeah. it, it, it's specifically unfrivolous. It's not the best 24 to 70, but it's very well performing, especially considering its price, which makes it unfrivolous. Totally it's not unfrivolous. The best this by is by any means, but it's. But it, you are not wasting your money buying this. All right, let's take these over to the big board. So for today's More Money Than Brains frivolous scale of frivolousness, the Canon T3i got a 28.2, which puts it well below the Nikon D810, which is strange to see those two next to each other. Next on the list was the Nikon D3300 kit lens kit, which is also the D T3i kit lens kit. Nikon D3300, very high, ranks right above the D600. That's a lot of value for money. And the top of the board today, and probably forever and ever. I don't know, we thought it was going to be top of the board forever with the D600. Well, the Tom has a good point, but I'm just going to stick this way up. There's a Sigma 24-70 EX DG HSM 2.8 event lens. Ranks above the board, really. It's not out of place anywhere doing anything for six hundred, eight hundred dollars. So, yeah, I never thought that we would have anything in single digits. Nope. So that's your more frivolous money than brands frivolous money. 